Hey everyone, Gavin Syme here. I just want to take a quick look today at how I quickly work over an image in Photoshop. I've been editing a wedding today, and I'm just going to pop over into here, and here's a, a nice portrait from Nathan and Allie's wedding. Now, I've done my basic Lightroom work, which is, of course, where my, my workflow starts. I've done my grid edit, and I've done presets and things like that, like I talk about in the Super Workflow article and some of my other workshops. But what I want to look at is how I would bring an image into Lightroom and just do some, some quick basic burns, dodges, and pixel painting to really jazz up the image. There's a reason I, I always come into Photoshop on, on my best work. You can do a lot in Lightroom. We got brushes, we got lots of things, but it's not the same as bringing it in and just doing a nice edit in Photoshop. So I brought this portrait in. Of course, I'm not gonna do this with every image, just, just the best ones. I brought this portrait in. I made a copy of the background layer and I also made a blank layer. Now, there's kind of a standard workflow I'll do. The first thing I'm gonna do in Photoshop, and one of the reasons I actually come to Photoshop the most is the powerful burn and dodge tools. This is stuff that if you've watched some of my other workshop, like workshops like Exposed, HDR and Beyond, that kind of stuff, you've seen me talking about burn and dodge. But mainly we're just gonna look at kind of a quick overview of how I'll bring an image in and in just a couple minutes really refine it. Okay, so first of all, I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna start with a burn. I'll generally start with a burn in the mid-tones, let's call it around 20, 25%. Nice big brush. First thing I'm gonna do is just kind of start darkening things down. Let's drop this up down to about 20%, okay? 17, it looks like I'm at. Now, the main thing with a portrait or with any image is, is you wanna draw the eye to the subject. Whatever the subject is, obviously in this case, it's, it's Nathan and Allie. So I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna start burning down. It's so running a little bit slow because I am on a 16 bit. I'm actually doing the edit that I'll be using on this one. And I haven't worked, worked this image in here before. So you're just kind of seeing me go through this for the first time. First thing I'm gonna start doing is some basic burning and dodging, okay? Just to bring down the tonal values, I want to keep their faces up in the zone six range and kind of bring the rest down to the zone three, four, somewhere in there in the foliage in terms of getting a couple stops darker in the areas around them. Sometimes I'll even shrink the brush down a little bit, darken the area around them. What we're doing here is we're adding dimension. Using tone is one of the most overlooked tools. Of course, we should be using tone in camera and exposing and things like that. But if you look at a photographer like Ansel Adams, one of the things he was so good at is he would manage tone in the dark room. Of course, now in this case, we're, we're working with digital, although I, I do work with, with film as well. But we've already made some progress. We've darkened down the surrounding area. Okay, here's the original, here's the dark. Okay, let's continue, let's do a little bit more. Now that I've done some mid-tones, I'm gonna switch up here and I'm gonna burn shadows. I'm gonna turn it down a little more, maybe to about 10%. I'm going to be a little more selective here, and I'm going to keep it pretty low. 10% is actually too high there. Of course, the darker your shadows are, the more the burning is going to affect them. So I'm just going to go about 6% and leave protect tones checked on. And I'm just going to kind of start going through to areas that I think need it. I'm not afraid to command or control Z and undo it. But what I want to do is kind of build a lead in. So no matter where you look at this image, your eye has to be led into them. So kind of around the tops, the bottoms, the trees, the foliage, those kind of things. I'll work those a bit, darken things up a little, and kind of enrich the scene. What's happening here is we're controlling tone, and the more we control this tone, the more your eye is leading into them. All right, now, still burning here, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to switch to burn highlights. I'm going to leave that on real low because it's it's easy to overdo it. And I'm just going to burn down the dress just a little bit. You don't want to turn it to a gray muddle, but I want to bring back a little details. I've already done some of that in Lightroom because, of course, in there we're working directly with the raw file. Same with these branches. Sometimes I like to use little foreground branches, and this is a personal preference, but there's some highlights here, so I'm going to knock those down a little bit. And I'll just kind of go back and forth like this for a few minutes. I'm going to switch now to midtones again. Just do a little more work. When I'm doing mid-tones, I tend to run it a little bit higher because it's a bit more of a general adjustment. Now, the reason, one of the reasons that we're seeing get so much better and more refined burn and dodge in Photoshop than just, just using a Lightroom brush is because we have specific control over what tones we're affecting. And that's not to say I don't use brushes in Lightroom. In fact, I may have even done so on this, but there's a real specific control. Okay, let's see where we've come in just a few minutes here. Here's the start. Here's the after. We've really helped them to pop. This is this is subtle refinement, 
But this kind of stuff matters a lot if you're going to print. If I was doing a wall print of this, I would, of course, spend more time. But I'll, I'll take a few of the best images and do this even before the initial proof session. Now, this extra layer here, I'm going to rename that to PP. What this is is for pixel painting. I'm going to come in close here, and I'm going to switch over to brush mode, and I'm going to use a sample to just sample a patch of skin, set this to about 16%, and what I do with a pixel paint is with a low opacity, I just carefully paint in areas, you know, areas where maybe it was a little hot on the highlights, or there needs to be a little more detail, and I'll just kind of go through here and work on the flesh tones a little bit. You can, you can work with skin in a really beautiful way on this, because rather than just cloning things out, you can actually subdue wrinkles a little bit, uh, the, especially for if you have, you know, kind of some hot spots from where light was glaring a little bit, especially with people that have a bit of oily skin, that can be a common problem. But out here, you know, we have this kind of semi-overcast day, and there's there's some, some highlights and stuff going on, even though they're not clipping. But I can go in here and just kind of start pixel painting, and you don't, you don't want to do too much with this, because it, it does diminish some detail. I mean, you're brushing a color over the top. Now, you noticed I used a pretty low opacity here, and... Sometimes I'll sample other colors and, and use colors from other areas and things just to balance it out a little bit. And uh, it's, it's really easy to add some rosiness to cheeks and, and things like that if, if you want to jazz up the image a little bit as well. How far you go is up to you. The beauty is, of course, that this is on another layer, so I can go through and just turn this off whenever. But you can see how I can quickly kind of balance out. Here's the original. Here's a little pixel painting. Of course, all on layers. I'm going to put a little on the fingers because we don't need a ton of detail there. The goal in everything I do when editing an image is to make sure whatever the subject is that the eye is going to that subject. That's where I want to end up. The, the viewer's eye always needs to be landing on the subject. So I'll spend my time really working on that, strengthening that as much as possible. Now let's go back. I'm going to go to the burn again. Just burn the mid-tones. Now that we're in close, I'm just going to do a little on the hair, especially the bride's hair here. Just kind of richen that up a little bit. Do a little on the groom here too. Around the collar, we don't want that clipping, just kind of darken it down just a little bit. And then I'll switch over to Dodge. Dodge highlights is very powerful, it's also very easy to overdo, so I'll turn it down to about 5%. And you can use this to really bring out a bit of contrast on a face, you know, a ratio, something like that. It's not really bad here as it is, but I'm going to use it a little bit on the tiara. Make it a little brighter, a little bit on the hair. And while I'm at it on my burn and dodge layer, just a quick spot removal because I see some bits of dust and things like that. These are just basic retouches. And the main center point of them is the burn and dodge. I mean, that's really where the control is here. Okay. So what have we done in just a few minutes? If I was going to print, I would spend more time on this. However, with a bit of burning and dodging of shadows, mid-tones, highlights, a bit of pixel painting to work the details, we've gone from this original to this. This to this. Subtle control is very important. We're trying to make images that stand out. My goal as a photographer is, is to put beautiful pieces in albums and on walls. I'm not going to do this for every single image of the cake and, and the rings and, and all that kind of stuff. I'll use it for the feature images. And the larger an image is being printed, the more time I'll spend on it. I've been known to spend hours and hours and hours just working little details like this. But you don't have to spend hours and hours to get the general aesthetic. You can go in here and in just a few minutes you can gain control over an image to a really good degree. I'm just going to work it a little bit more, bring down some of this. What's happening by darkening the background, we're differentiating them. How far you're going to go is up to you. You want to try and keep it from getting unnatural. You don't want it to feel faked. At the same time, you want to maintain that richness. I'm just going to do a little more on the highlights as well, right around the collar. A little too much. I'm going to turn it down. When you're targeting highlights and shadows, you do got to be a little more careful, a little more specific. You generally don't want to run it on a real high opacity. Run it across the road back here. Take that down a little bit. And right here on the walkway. Here's our nice Lightroom image. And here's our refined 10 minutes in Photoshop image. Sometimes... They're more drastic than this, but it's always distinctive. It's always significant. I'll probably crop 
a little over here when I'm back in Lightroom on this side, give this uh, a little more dynamic space and, and post it. And if we make a print, I'll spend some more time with it, but I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And I just kind of wanted to share that. I was in here editing, I figured, why not? Let's just record a quick video, nothing fancy today. But I uh, hope you found that useful. By all means, get in there, dig into that burn and dodge. In my workshops, one of the things I really emphasize is work with those tones. You know, Kim Whitmire taught me that tone is one of the least utilized and least understood factors in our photography. And, and burning and dodging is just another way, along with zones and good exposure and all that kind of stuff, to better understand tone. But as always, you can find uh, my other projects and workshops and tips over at simefx.com, and uh, we'll catch you later.